Hello there, my fellow noble pilots of the Knightly Realms, and welcome. Welcome once again to another episode about the Great Houses of the Imperial Knights. Today it's also gonna be the last Great House video in this series, as we pretty much talked about all the others. Ladies and gentlemen, none other than House Crast. We're gonna learn a bit about their history, what makes them unique, and the symbology of their heraldry. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? House Crest is an Imperial Knighthouse of the Questor Mechanicus, that has sworn direct fealty to the Adeptus Mechanicus. The Night World of Crisis was the first to be rediscovered at the outset of the Great Crusade in the late 30th millennium by rogue trader militant Jeffers. Only a few dozen light years away from Mars, the planet was quickly taken into the fold and oaths of allegiance sworn between its lords and the Emperor. Its proximity to Mars also meant that the knightly houses of Crisis were able to swiftly resupply their knights with new weapons and equipment. Having battled alone against the Dark for centuries uncounted, the Houses of Crisis welcomed the chance to be part of this new, fledgling human empire. Foremost among the knightly Houses of Crisis was Crast, and their strength at arms was bolstered further by their new alliance with the Mechanicum. Gladly did the full might of House Crast set forth at the bidding of Mars to fight in the Emperor's Wars, leaving the lesser houses to consolidate their alliance with the Mechanicum on Crisis. Tragically, they were soon to be swept up in the vast civil war between the Space Marine Legions, as their allies turned upon each other in a bitter, galaxy-spanning conflict. This was to have long and dire consequences for the planet's nobles. In the final days of the fighting, the arch-douchebag Horus scoured their world as he blazed the path to Terra, and almost all the noble families on Crisis and their knights were destroyed. The knights of House Crest returned to their planet only to find it devastated, and the lesser noble houses all but erased out of existence. Once a lush jungle world, Crisis still bears the scars inflicted by Horus. Today, what were once continents thick with plants and oceans teeming with life, have been reduced to skeletal, petrified forests and vast open basins, empty apart from the fossilized remains of ancient sea creatures. The keeps of dead nightly houses still dot the landscape. On shorelines turned from wave-washed beaches into dry, towering cliff faces, and on islands rising up above empty seas, their crumbling remains are a constant reminder of the treachery of Horus. In places where the virus bombs fell from orbit, great toxic lakes still remain, as deadly now as they were 10,000 years ago. Periodically, huge dust storms scour Crisis's surface, kicking up chemical clouds that roll across its dry ocean beds, killing anything in their path. Only the strongholds of House Crest remain, along with the Mechanicus mining platforms still leeching the world for its mineral wealth. In the shielded enclaves of the nobles, some semblance of the world they once knew remains. Green gardens and artificial lakes protected from the ravages of Crisis's ruined atmosphere. Even so, it is a parody of normalcy, drawn from faded tapestries and half-remembered stories. When a Crastian noble stands atop his keep and stares out through the shimmering haze of the Void Shield, he knows his world has been taken away from him and to whom he owes the blood price for its death. Ever since the Horus heresy, the Knights of House Crest have vowed that whenever the threat of chaos rears its ugly head, they will be there to sever the serpent at the neck. It is a point of pride for the nobles of House Crest that they were the very first Night World to make formal alliance with the Imperium in the Great Crusade that they fought for the Emperor during the Horus Heresy, and suffered greatly in the process, only strengthens their sense of superiority over other knightly houses. After their planet was ravaged by Horus, the Adeptus Mechanicus helped the nobles rebuild and strengthen their much depleted household. 
In return, House Crest swore eternal loyalty to Mars and became a member of the Questor Mechanicus. Their ties to the Mechanicus heavily influence Crestian society, and their nobles offer up prayers to the Omnissia in the vaulted machine shrines of void shielded castles. It is to the machine god that they pray, hoping that his blessed technology will not fail them. By contrast with other knightly houses, Crest contributes more knights to the service of the Legio Titanicus of Mars than any other, with the exception of House Tyrannus, the Knights of the Red Planet itself. Wisely, the current fabricator general of the Mechanicus maintains this eagerness among the nobility by offering them war wherever the taint of heresy and the stain of chaos can be found. There can be no greater reward for a Crustian knight than punishing the heretic, and in battle the house's young nobles are prone to recklessness, if it offers the chance to claim a prestigious skill such as a chaos super heavy or a demon engine. The head takers are the greatest expression of this. These are those of House Crest who have destroyed Chaos Titans and earned an eternal place as heroes of Crisis. Of the bitter betrayals that led to the destruction of all but one of the knightly houses on Crisis, House Crest holds the base treachery of the Legio Mortis to be the worst. As one of Mars's own Titan legions, the Devs' heads fought alongside the Knights of House Crest on many occasions in the early years of the Great Crusade. However, after siding with Horus during the ensuing Galactic Civil War, the Devs' heads were reborn in the image of the plague god Nurgle, and led the assault that devastated Crisis and annihilated the planet's lesser houses. The Knights of House Crest have ever sought to avenge their fallen kinsmen and seek out the titans of the Legio Mortis above all the others in battle. Should a knight claim a Chaos Titan kill, his deed will herald many celebrations on his return to the homeworld. However, such revelry will pale in comparison to that on Crisis should a knight of Crast fell one of the Legio Mortis. This noble will be treated to a triumph in his honor, and he will henceforth be known as a headtaker. Every headtaker bears a broken death's head symbol on his night suit or tabard, a battle honor reminding all of his heroic deed and celebrating the destruction of a hated foe. In the middle of the screaming sea on Crisis, on an island which was once a tropical paradise, a towering monument of adamantium stands watch over thousands of kilometers of dry ocean and cursed earth. This is the Hammer of Traitors and it is here that House Crest records its tally against the servants of the Dark Gods. At the top of the monument are chronicled the greatest of the kills, the Legio Mortis Titans vanquished by the Crestian Knights. The tally works its way down through demon engines, super heavy tanks, and important fortresses. Towards the bottom are heretic armies which have been crushed, little more than the names of worlds, prominent commanders, and cults, and then casualty numbers in their tens of thousands, as if an afterthought. The base of the Hammer of Traitors serves a different purpose, as its huge foundation is ringed in chains and collars. It is here that House Crest brings most of the hated traitors, chaos generals, heretics and betrayers, often secretly taken away from a war zone without the knowledge of the Inquisition. These prisoners are then stripped and shackled to the monument, to suffer the foul work that their own gods had wrought on Crisis. For most, the poison air and chemical wind will kill them in solar hours, choking on their own bile and blood as their flesh burns and peels away. Stronger specimens, like Chaos Space Marines, have been known to last for a few days, until a toxic storm washes over the island and flays their flesh away down to their bones. Agents of the Inquisition have, on a few occasions, turned their attention to this nightly house, but always the political might of the Mechanicus is there to confound their efforts. These strangers find no welcome on Crisis, and are as likely to vanish as those sent to the Hammer. There are also no records of the Hammer of Traitors in any Crastian data core or cogitator enclave, its location known only to the Lord of the House and a few trusted nobles. 
The Adeptus Mechanicus is aware of the Hammer of Traitors and the Dark Secret of House Crast. Though the current Fabricator General is content to let the nobles punish their foes as they see fit, provided that Crisis still fights for the interest of Mars. With such strong connections to the Forge world of Mars, House Crast has ever borne the red of the Mechanicus as its livery. As House Crast was the lone survivor of the knightly houses on Crisis, in 976, M31, the House Crest was changed by the unanimous consent of its nobility. Instead of the lion rampant, they adopted the symbol of a gauntlet squeezing the life out of a serpent of chaos to show their hatred of the traitors. Every noble then swore a mighty oath of vengeance against all the traitor forces of Horus. Ever since the bitter wars of the Great Scouring, the Knights of House Crest have been at the forefront in the fight against Chaos. In 663 M33, Cyan Crest led his forces to a great victory against the forces of the Dark Gods, crushing the Golden Taint Warband in the battle for the Gates of Opsilom. They added a pair of crossed Witch Hunter hammers behind the main crest, representing how they crush the forces of chaos wherever they may be. In 203 M36, Lord Taban Crast offered up his firstborn son to the Legio Titanicus of Mars, as a mark of allegiance to the Adeptus Mechanicus. In return, the Fabricator General reaffirmed his support of the House's war against chaos. The personal crest of House Crast took on its currently recognized form at this time, the half-cog Opus Machina symbol of the Adeptus Mechanicus prominently displayed in the center of their crest. The dual split displays House Crest's loyalty, which is equally divided between their house and the machine cult. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Knights of House Crest for today. As I mentioned in the beginning, this is the last of the great houses that I will be covering. But like I did promise in my latest channel update video, I will be moving on to individual legions of titans after this one. And we will see what we can do there. Is House Crest among your favorite knight factions? What do you like or dislike most about them? Let us know your opinions or thoughts on it in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you an awesome day. The Emperor protects.